Hey guys, welcome back. So today we're gonna dive into the five things that you should know about forbearance. Now, over the last couple of weeks, I've done a lot of videos on forbearance and I've touched on a lot of these topics individually, but haven't done one video to condense them all. Um, so I thought I would use today to talk about those five items if you're considering the forbearance process. Now, I'm Jeb Smith. I'm a real estate broker here in Southern California. And if you're new to my channel, it's all about real estate, helping buyers and sellers navigate the real estate process, and also on trending topics like forbearance at the moment. So if that interests you at all, do me a favor, hit that subscribe button in the bottom corner and give me a thumbs up if you like this content, as it does help more people see it, which accomplishes my goal of help educating buyers, sellers, and homeowners. So. The first thing you should know is that everyone qualifies for forbearance if you have a federally backed loan, right? So part of the CARES Act, um, they more or less required any Fannie, Freddie, FHA, VA lender, Jenny May as well, um, to provide forbearance to anyone that was affected due to a COVID-related illness. Now that means if you've if your income's been affected um, because you've been laid off or you're currently unemployed now, or maybe you're self-employed and you've just had a drop in income, you can actually qualify for forbearance. Now, I've done a lot of videos and I've talked in a lot of detail about how you shouldn't do forbearance if you don't absolutely have to. And while I still believe that to be the case, you know, I want to say if you need forbearance, take it. Don't be ashamed of, you know, going in and, and taking forbearance if you absolutely need it, right? It's one of those things that will um, will help you. It will help na you know get you through this process, this tough tough time if, if income um, is an issue or, or if, if you're just not in a position where you have the savings to continue making that, that monthly payment. So as long as you have a federally backed loan, your lender has to grant you forbearance if you call and let them know that you've been affected um, due to COVID. Now, if you've been affected due to some other reason, they don't necessarily have to give you um, the forbearance option. So make sure you're clear on why you're calling and they should grant you that. Now, if your loan is not federally backed, chances are your lender is still giving you the option for forbearance. The terms are just gonna be different, right? All of the stuff I talk about in this video isn't necessarily going to apply to you. Um, and there, unfortunately, there's not a lot of information out there on loans that are non-federally backed on what they're offering because they're not. there's not a set uh, set of guidelines for for banks that are um, that have non-traditional loans um, and and non-federally backed loans. So today, this is primarily for those of you who have federally backed loans. So the second thing you should know is that whatever you you know whatever payments you miss, they do have to be repaid. Now, I know there's a lot of information out there that says loans have to be paid in a lump sum. Now, there's been a lot of changes. That's how it initially started. There was a lot of information that said these loans had to be paid in a lump sum. That is not the case. Now you do have options, um, but the, the money that you haven't paid with regards to your mortgage, your taxes, your insurance, it does have to be repaid. Now, it can be repaid in a lump sum, like I mentioned. Um, there's also different payment plans out there that your lender will structure you um, to, to be able to repay uh, your missed payments over a period of time. There's also a potential for a loan modification. And honestly, the best option out of all of this is the option that they came out with last week. And Fannie and Freddie said that they're now allowing you to defer missed payments to the end of your loan. So basically taking those missed payments and adding them to the end of your loan, in which case your, your monthly payment uh, your maturity date, you know the, the the term of your loan, as well as your interest rate remains the same. So once you're able to start making payments again, you basically call your lender, tell them you want out of forbearance, and you just pick up where you left off, and any of those missed payments are added to the back of your loan. So know that it does have to be repaid. Three, what happens if you did a, an initial forbearance period of three months or six months, and you still need additional time? What happens? You call your lender, and you can extend it. So. You know, if, if you're in a position where your forbearance is coming due um, and you're not sure, you know, nothing has changed in your employment situation and you can't make your payments, know that there's an option to extend it. You can keep your forbearance going up to one year. So, you know, if you initially did it for three months, know that you still have nine more months. Now, they might not grant you all nine months at one time. They might give you another three month trial or another six months. Whatever it is, just know that there is an opportunity to extend it 
if you need it. So, you know, it's not like, you know, if, if the three month expires, it just, it goes away and then you have to start making those payments. There are options. There are different things out there to allow you to, to keep in forbearance if needed. Um, the fourth thing is that, you know, going into forbearance, know that it will likely affect your ability to refinance or purchase a new home for the next 12 months after you exit forbearance. So if you decide to go into forbearance, not only might it affect your credit score, now I know there's a lot of information out there that says it shouldn't affect your credit score, but I've had a lot of viewers reach out to me directly and said it has impacted, so it could affect your credit score, could. Um, secondly, is it could affect your ability to refinance or purchase another home. So I know a lot of people are like, hey, I'm gonna take the forbearance option now, and I'm just gonna refinance in, in three months when I get out of forbearance and try to lower my rate. That's not an option for you if you go into forbearance, at least how it's currently written into lender guidelines. Now, there's a lot of information out there that says lenders are going to change their guidelines to allow people that went into forbearance the ability to refinance or possibly even purchase another home, but as of today, that's not an option. So know that if you accept forbearance, it likely will affect your ability to refinance or purchase. And in addition, it will likely affect your credit score. And the last thing is if you call, you know, if you're at the end of your forbearance period and you know, your options are to pay in a lump sum or defer or whatever it is, if you're in a position where none of those options work for you, chances are your lender is going to work with you in some way. Now, there's some misinformation out there. A lot of people have, have reached out to me to ask me, hey, look, if, if I get to the end of this and you know I can't make the lump sum or the repayment plan doesn't work or whatever, can the bank just foreclose on me? And the answer is no. The bank cannot just foreclose on your house um, or look at your income and say, you know, you no longer qualify. Um, they are, you know, they may need uh, documentation to prove that you're you know you've had a hardship and even if your income has dropped they can't say that you don't qualify for the loan anymore now they can structure it you know modify the loan um, lower the interest rate maybe lower the payment do a loan modification if you will uh, to allow you to continue making some payments but the bank can't just come out and say you no longer qualify for this home and take it from you, right? So I've had a lot of you say, you know, I'm, a, I'm scared of going into forbearance and then them asking me for documentation. And once I provide that documentation, them just taking my house, that cannot happen, right? They, they have to give you different options in order to qualify. And if none of those options work, then they will likely work out some sort of modification, right? And, and no bank can ever just show up to your house and, and kick you out. There's a whole process that they have to go in order to foreclose on a property. So just know that when going through it, that it's not black and white, right? It's not you either you fit or you don't. And if you don't, we, we come in to take your house, right? Um, because that, that wouldn't, um, be cool. And, um, it's, it's not even viable. So don't worry about that. But you know, again, there's a lot of information coming out on this subject, um, daily, uh, you know, as Fannie and Freddie update their guidelines, I will continue to update you guys and provide you with more information. The same thing with FHA and VA. You know, my goal here is to help educate you, kind of, you know, guide you through this process, make you more informed so that when you're talking to your servicer, your lender, you're armed with information. I've said this on several different videos that, you know, the people that you're talking to on the phone, chances are they're recently employed at the servicer, right? Because these, um, these servicers are getting an influx of calls. I mean, you know, a hundred times greater than they were two months ago. And so they, you know, they didn't have the manpower to, to handle those phone calls. Therefore they've hired a bunch of people recently and those recently hired people are reading from a script so if you have the correct information and you're talking to that person and they don't know what they're talking about inform them let them know the information right and if you need to call and talk to someone else or talk to their manager do that because again the more information you know the better setup you are to have the correct conversation with that servicer and the better options you'll be provided based on that information so I hope that is helpful. Uh, if you do have additional questions, do me a favor, comment below, reach out to me directly. I do my best to go all through all of the questions that are that are left here. And um, you know, everybody that's contacted me, I've reached back out. I've had a lot of conversations with you all, and I appreciate you continuing to reach out to me and continuing to provide me with information because it helps me provide it to more people. But either way, I appreciate you taking the time to watch. I appreciate your support, and I look forward to seeing you again soon. Have an awesome day. Bye bye.